In section 1.7, we will be looking at the linear dependence or linear independence of a set of vectors. So here are the formal definitions. It says that a set of vectors is linearly independent if the homogeneous linear system, which we see here, has only the trivial solution. That means that all of the weights, x1, x2, to xp, must all be zeros. So a set of vectors is linearly dependent if the equation has non-trivial solutions. This means that the weights can be values other than all zeros for the homogeneous linear system to have a solution. In this example, we want to know whether or not the set of vectors v1, v2, and v3 form a linearly dependent set. So to do that, we need to show, based on the definition, that x1, v1 plus x2, v2 plus x3, v3 equal to 0 has non-trivial solutions. So we want to say, does the system have non-trivial solutions? If it does have non-trivial solutions, then we know that the set is linearly dependent. If it has only the trivial solution, then the set is linearly independent. It then says that if they are linearly dependent, then find the weights. So if we recall, linearly dependent means that the homogeneous equation has non-zero weights. And so the weights in this case would be x1 and x2 and x3. So we want to find what the values x1, x2, and x3 might be. To answer this question, we need to look at the linear system and right here you see the coefficient matrix, and we place the coefficient matrix into reduced row echelon, um, into row echelon form. Now the reason we're only looking at the coefficient matrix is because if we were to create the augmented matrix, the augmented matrix would simply have zeros in the augmented column. So it's no need to deal with that because any row operations you perform on that column will still give you zeros. So if we're looking at the coefficient matrix given here, Notice that we have two pivots, and the last column of this coefficient matrix is a non-pivot column. Because we have a non-pivot column, we know that this linear system has three variables. Hence, just by looking at this co coefficient matrix in row echelon form, we know that the system forms a linearly dependent set. So we know that this is linearly dependent. The question then asks, when the linear system or the set of vectors is linearly dependent, they want us to find the dependence relationship. Again, that means to find the actual values x1, x2, and x3. Remember, these would be non-zero values now because we have non-trivial solutions um, that make this homogeneous linear system have a solution. So here, notice that we have the coefficient matrix now in row echelon, reduced row echelon form. And so from here, we can write the solution. So the third column is a non-pivot column so that we know that x3 is a free quantity, it's a free variable. So now we can write the other variables in terms of the quantity x3. So from this expression we find that x1 is equal to minus 3 halves x3. So really this says x1 plus 3 halves x3 equal to 0, so I've just now placed the 3 halves x3 on the other side of the equation. From the second row, we get that x2 is equal to minus 2x3. So our solution vector x has elements x1, x2, and x3. And now we can replace the quantities x1 and x2 with their expressions in terms of x3. 
So for x1, we have minus 3 halves x3. For x2, we have minus 2 x3. And x3 is free, so we just rewrite it into the vector. So now I take x3 out. x3 can be any real number, right? It's free, so it can take on any real value. We have x3 times the vector minus 3 halves, minus 2, and 1. So now we have the solution set, which is represented by any multiple of the vector minus 3 halves, minus 2, 1. So notice here, if we allow x3 to be 1, now again, x3 can be any value, so we're just taking it to be 1 at the moment. Then we get the, fine, the following linear dependence relationship, and that is that minus 3 halves times v1, minus 2 times v2, plus 1 times v3 should be equal to the 0 vector. So let's just do the algebra. Right, so here we've placed in the vectors v1, v2, and v3. And now if we take the product of the scalar with the vectors, we get the following. Notice that indeed we have for the first element 0 minus 2 plus 2 which gives us 0 and 3 minus 4 which gives us negative 1 plus 1 also gives us 0. So we see that this linear dependence relationship works and that we therefore have shown that there are non-zero weights for which the homogeneous linear system will have non-trivial solutions. It turns out that there are infinitely many ways that we could actually write this linear dependence relationship. Well, how do we know this? Well, we said the quantity x3 is free, which means it can take on any value. So, for example, let's let x3 be equal to 2. If x3 is equal to 2, then our linear dependence relationship would look like the following. Minus 3, v1. Minus 4, v2. Plus 2, v3 should also give us the zero vector. So you can check that on your own to make sure that it's the case. But notice that we have different values, x1, x2, and x3, that lead us to the same result. The reason is because when we have a homogeneous linear system and it has a solution other than the, the trivial solution, then there are infinitely many solutions that are possible. Now let's look at another way that we could look at the linear dependence of a set of vectors. Let's say that we were presented a set of vectors. Notice that these are the same vectors that we had in the previous case. So this is v1, v2, and v3. And we could ask the question, do the columns of the matrix form a linearly dependent set? And all we would need to show is that AX equal to 0, which is the matrix equation, has non-trivial solutions. So if we recall, this matrix equation AX equal to 0 is the same thing as the vector equation X1, B1, plus X2, V2, plus X3, V3 equal to 0. All right, so these statements are actually equivalent. Another way that you might address this question is in the following way, and we'll actually see this formally later. Notice that in this linear system, there are fewer equations than there are unknowns. This implies that we have an underdetermined system. So it's underdetermined. And I'm spelling it wrong, so let's redo that. It's under determined. In the undetermined equate, um, undeter underdetermined case, again you have more unknowns than equations. Because of that, we know that we cannot specify all of the unknowns which automatically tells us that AX equal to zero has non-trivial solutions. 
So a x equal to 0 has non-trivial solutions. Hence, we can conclude that the set of, or the columns of the matrix A form a linearly dependent set. So now let's talk about the linear dependence of a set that contains only a single vector. Let's say we have the set that contains the vector V1. So the definition of linear dependence for this single vector still applies. And that is that the homogeneous equation x1, v1 equal to 0 must have non-trivial solutions for the set to be considered linearly dependent. So you might ask yourself, how could it be that the linear system x1, v1 equal to 0 has non-trivial solutions? Well, consider the following case. Let's say that v1 is the 0 vector. So if v1 is the 0 vector, then our linear system looks like x1 times the 0 vector equals the 0 vector. Notice that this means that x1 is free. Why? Because it doesn't matter what value x1 takes on, the linear system still holds. You get 0 equal to 0. So because x1 is free, this implies the linear system has non-trivial solutions. Therefore, for the case that v1 is the 0 vector, we know that the set is linearly dependent. Now let's consider the case where v1 is not the 0 vector. In that case, the homogeneous linear system is x1, v1 equal to 0. But the only way that we can get 0 equal to 0 for this linear system is if the quantity x1 is equal to 0. Again, v1 is non-zero, so that's not going to make it 0. So we must have x1 equal to 0. Was, what does this tell us? This means that the linear system has only the trivial solution. Right? Trivial solution means that the solution is 0. So x1 can only take on the value 0 for this linear system to be the 0 vector. So since the linear system has only the trivial solution, then we know that this set is linearly independent. So we can sum up our discussion about the linear dependence of a single vector in the following way. A set containing a single vector is linearly dependent only if the vector is the zero vector. So if the vector in the set is any other vector, that means any other non-zero vector, then the set with that single vector would be considered linearly independent.